Hey there, in this video we are going to look at solving by factoring. So now once we factor, we're going to talk about how do we actually solve for x and um, that's going to give us our solution or solutions of the problem. Now remember if we have, um, we'll be looking at quadratics, so if we have a degree 2, the most number of solutions that we can have is 2, but it's possible that we have less than that, 1 solution or 0 solutions. So to solve a quadratic by factoring, we have to make sure that we have zero on one side of the equation first. So first we have to get that zero on one side and then we can factor. So that will be the next step to factor. And then once we factor, then we set each factor equal to zero and solve. And that's how we get our answers. So let's go ahead and look at example one. Zero is already on one side, so that's done for us. And then what we need to do is factor the left side. So I'm going to use guess and check. You could use guess and check, or you could use grouping where you split the middle term into two. It's fully up to you. So 2x squared will go in the beginning as 2x and x. And then we look at that term negative 9. So I'm going to focus on 9 first, and then I'll worry about the negative. So 1 and 9, 3 and 3. And we need our inner and our outer products to combine to that 3x. So when I do that, you can go through if you need to and check 1 and 9, check 9 and 1, but 3 and 3 will work. So 3 times x is 3x, 2x times 3 is 6x. When we combine those, we get 3x only if the 3 was negative. So negative 3x plus 6x and that's how we end up with the positive 3x, that middle term there. So we need a negative 3 on this one because negative 3 times x will get us to that negative 3x for the inner product, which will combine with 2x times 3, which is 6x, to give us that 3x. So this will be a positive, and the other one is negative. And it still equals 0. Once we have it factored, that's what we've learned up until this point. Once we have it factored, we take each factor and we set it equal to zero. So we're going to take 2x minus 3 and set it equal to zero and solve for x there. And that will give us one solution. And then x plus 3 is going to be set equal to zero. And we'll solve for x there. And that'll give us our second solution. So again, we can do that because the green here and the red here, those two factors, those two sets of parentheses, if they're being multiplied and they equal zero, one or both of them have to equal zero, not x, but the green as a whole, the first set of parentheses or the second set of parentheses, one or both of those have to equal zero because they're being multiplied together to equal zero. And the only way we get zero for multiplication is if one of those or both were zero. So we set each equal to zero and solve to see um, what our x values could possibly be. And to do that, we just do our inverse operation. So plus 3 on both sides. 2x equals 0 plus 3 is 3. Divide by 2 on both sides. And that gives us x equals 1.5 or x equals 3 halves, either way. And then on our other one, we subtract 3 from both sides. And that will isolate x right away. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So our solutions on this one will be 1.5 and negative 3, or 3 halves and negative 3 either way. Looking at number 2, we have a similar problem except for we don't have 0 on one side. So we need to go ahead and add 7. By doing that inverse operation, that will get 0 on this right side. Now, the 7 will not combine with anything directly on the left side, but we can go ahead and just write it in standard form. x squared plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. And then we just go ahead and factor that left side. Now, because a is equal to 1, we can remember just look at the factors of 7, which anyway are just one pair. But we can just look at the factors of 7 and see which two add or subtract directly to that 8x. So that's going to be 1 and 7 here. You can check your inner and your outer product, but you'll see 1x and 7x will give us 8x by both being positive. Then we check um, or we set each factor equal to 0. So we're going to set x plus 1 equal to 0, and we will set um, x plus 7 equal to 0 and solve. So x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0. 
and then we subtract 1 from both sides to give us x equals 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then subtract 7 from both sides over here. And that will give us x equals 0 minus 7 is negative 7. So again, we see our solutions here by factoring and then setting each factor equal to 0 and solving. Now the big key thing here is we need 0 on one side. If I would have just tried to factor um, as is up here and not had 0 on one side, it would not work out the same way. We can't just set each factor equal to whatever's over there. It has to be zero on that side. So let's look at one more example. Number three, we see x squared minus 16 equals zero. x squared minus 16 equals zero. This one looks a little bit different than the last two that we did because it only has two terms. Whereas these last two, when we had zero on one side, the other side had three terms. So you have a few options with factoring. So x squared minus 16, you can set it up as x squared plus 0x minus 16 equals 0. However, if you notice that they are a difference of perfect squares, that can save us some time. So remember, a difference of perfect squares, when we factor, it will be x and x to multiply back to x squared, and then 16 is a perfect square. 4 times 4 gives us 16. One factor will be plus, one factor will be minus. So we set each of these factors equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. So when we do that, we have this and this. And then we go ahead and add and subtract 4 depending on the equation you're looking at. So over here, we'll subtract 4 from both sides. And we'll get x equals negative 4. Over here, we add 4 to both sides and we get x equals positive 4. So x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4. Um, those will be your solutions on that one. So um, in summary, when we are factoring quadratics and solving specifically by factoring, we have an equation and we need to get 0 on one side first. That is the key thing. We have to get 0 on one side. Then we'll factor. And once we have our factored form, we set each of these factors equal to zero and we solve to get whatever X is equal to. All right, and that is our uh, process for solving by factoring.